local documentary is calling attention to what it calls a sometimes strained relationship between the Rochester Police Department and the minority community. It is called RPD Exposed. It highlights cases of alleged abuse on the part of the local police, most recently the shooting of a city man during a drug raid. Producer David Varro, or Varro was handing out flyers downtown to promote the show, which aired for the first time tonight. He is not a professional journalist, but his family did win a civil lawsuit against the police department. Maybe it'll motivate people out there to come out and also get involved. You know, I don't see a lot of, you know, younger people involved in uh, community meetings, you know, and, 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 you know, demanding, you know, a change. That show will air again on cable channel 15 this Thursday at 9 p.m. A spokesperson from the Rochester Police Department tells us they investigate all complaints against their officers. I want to thank you again, you know, personally, I want to thank Indie Media, um, you know, and yourself for, for basically being the vehicle and providing the vehicle. There's just so much that um, that people don't know and don't realize, and especially the youth. Um, my story is uh, basically my dad, Mario Vara, uh, was a longtime community activist here in Rochester, um, specifically in the fight uh, against police brutality and misconduct. Um, those people viewing that that actually, you know, have been in Rochester uh, uh, most of their life, if not all their life. We call uh, a lot of high-profile cases uh, coming up from the 80s, Alicia McCullough, Calvin Green. 21-year-old um. Alicia McCullough, daughter of then-executive director of Action for a Better Community, James McCullough, was gunned down by Rochester Police Officer Thomas L. Whitmore. According to one neighbor, after having heard one shot, he looked out his window and saw Officer Whitmore standing over McCullough's body. He then witnessed Officer Whitmore firing a second shot into McCullough. Less than three months later, a grand jury cleared Rochester Police Officer Thomas L. Whitmore in the killing of 21-year-old Alicia McCullough. Again, in the 80s, 30-year-old Calvin Green was shot three times at close range and killed by Rochester Police Officer Gary E. Smith. Green was unarmed. Less than two weeks later, a grand jury cleared Rochester Police Officer Gary E. Smith in the killing of 30-year-old Calvin Green. Numerous cases in the um, early 2000s, it was Vandy Davis, um, Craig Hurd. A decade later, 21-year-old Vandy Davis was shot and killed by Rochester Police Officer David Gephardt. Gephardt, who said he accidentally tripped over an extension cord causing his shotgun to go off, striking Davis in the chest, was cleared by a grand jury of any wrongdoing in the killing of 21-year-old Vandy Davis. On June 10th, 2002, 14-year-old Craig Hurt was driving a stolen car in Rochester's Park Avenue neighborhood. RPD officers cornered Hurt on this dead-end street. He was shot twice in the head and killed by officers Serge Savichev and Hector Padham. Heard an honor roll student at Charlotte Middle School was unarmed. On July 11, 2002, a grand jury cleared Rochester police officers Hector Padham and Serge Savichev in the killing of 14-year-old Craig Heard. Uh, but before that, I mean, my dad became very involved in um, in these issues, and even. Um, even Al Sharpton, who a lot of people will remember, came down here a lot during the mid to late 80s, very early 90s. Mm -hmm. And my dad and him actually uh, built a friendship and developed a friendship. And, and uh, when um, when Al Sharpton would come, um, I used to basically tag along, you know what I mean? As a teenager, tag along with my dad. Uh, my dad did a local um, Spanish language cable access program called La Voz del Pueblo which maybe even non-Spanish speaking people will recognize that means the voice of the people, the voice of the town. So that's kind of my background, tagging along a lot with my dad, um, doing a lot of the camera work for him, a lot of like behind the scenes. And I think I learned a lot from my dad and from my dad's passion to expose injustices. And uh, my dad was my hero. I mean, I know that, that that word is sometimes used loosely or whatever, but he truly was. He wasn't a politician. Um, he didn't do it for his interest. He didn't make a dime out of it. And his passion was just something that since then I really haven't seen anyone 
you know, have that passion, especially when, when, when they don't expect nothing in return. I think it's easy for the politicians to go out here and shake hands and take pictures with babies, which they're known for, and promise the world just to get our vote. Um, but it's something else for when a man that, that was born and raised and grew up in a, um, in a police state, which was Cuba, and for him to have come here and to see that the Constitution is basically a piece of paper that's hanging on a wall and uh, is not really being implemented. I mean, it's not really, you know, yeah, we have the right to free speech and supposedly we have the right to videotape from our property, uh, even though we saw the unlawful arrest of Emily Good. So I, you know, I don't want to get on uh, uh, off off topic, but basically that was my background, mm -hmm. and um, tagging along a, a lot with him. And what happened was, as a result of my dad's work and his high profile, you know, I mean, uh, status with exposing police and not being afraid to come out there and, and tell it like it is, when so many people conveniently would hide at a moment, you know, uh, pastors, a lot of the local preachers, reverends would rather preach behind the pulpit. And my dad was, you know, on the ground, so to speak, you know what I mean, and, and, and exposing stuff and not afraid to do so. And what happened was, uh, as a result, the RPD made his life uh, miserable, co continuously, repeatedly, on a daily basis, intimidating him, uh, harassing him. And unfortunately, my dad fell into a deep depression and uh, basically he committed suicide in 1993, which was very hard for me. And uh, in, in very, very large part, um, the RPD contributed, you know what I mean, to his, um, to his depression, to his taking his life. And it's something that obviously, you know, a lot of people, I get interviewed a lot, not only by, by local media, but also by, um, you know, uh, uh, different magazines, different, you know, stuff outside of Rochester uh, for my work. And everybody always asks me, why are you so passionate? What is it that drives you? Like, what is your problem with the police? And, and I tell them simply, it's, it's, it's basically, um, I'll admit it, it has become a very personal issue for me, obviously, as many could understand with what my dad went through. And, and um, you know, it's, it's just, I, I can't ignore something and I can't just sit back and say, well, that's just the way it is. I mean, I, I guess a lot of it I learned from my dad and I have a passion to basically expose um, what a corrupt uh, police department, which finally... Finally, thanks to a girl with a, with a camera, uh, an iPod on her property recording a racial profile stop in front of her house, which couldn't have been any better, um, you know, and, and, and thank God that the police actually pulled this man over uh, in front of Emily Good's uh, residence so that she could get this on tape. And finally, I mean, Rochester's history with the police department is, is corrupt. Going back, you know, which we'll get into that. Uh, it's nothing new. It really, truly is nothing new. I'm not surprised by what happened. I'm just loving the fact that the eyes of the world. I mean, one day I spoke with Emily, and the next day I got up and I was reading about Emily's story on Russian television on a website. And, and it's the best feeling in the world to have the eyes of the world be on Rochester and finally see not so much on a local level or maybe on a New York State level, which stories have gotten out of here and made it out of the, out of the city into New York State, into the rest of the counties, you know, uh, Manhattan and whatnot. Um, but to have the world just see Rochester and, and to see comments from people in California, from, from law enforcement officers, to see comments saying it's deplorable, it's disgusting. I'm a law enforcement officer and I've been an officer for 14 years or 20 years. And... And, and it, it's, it's just, it gives us a bad name and it gives the good officers, which by the way, there are good officers out there. And I want to make that clear. I'm not anti-police. I'm anti-rogue, corrupt, dirty police. Okay? So uh, we need the police. We actually, we need police. We need police that are, are decent, that know their job. I've always said that are more like social workers with guns. Mm -hmm. And what that means is people that defuse situations that de-escalate situations, not bully cops that escalate situations like, uh, like Massick did, which, um, which he violated a, a woman's, you know, uh, um, civil rights. So that's kind of my thing, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, I know I can get long-winded, but there's a lot of passion in me. And, um, 
And that's that's my background, that's my history. And for the past 10 plus years, I've really been going very hard um, with my two films I produced um, about the RPD, RPD Exposed and RPD Batches of Dishonor, Corruption and Murder, uh, dealing with, with very, um, you know, uh, disgusting, just execution style murders of unarmed, innocent um, African Americans in this city. The thing to hear real quick, the thing about Adam McFadden's letter is I, I actually know Adam personally. I went to school with Adam. I believe Adam means good. I really do. Uh, we've talked before and, uh, you know, I, I believe that he, uh, being an African-American, being a city resident, uh, way before he was into the, the politics side of things and, and before he was councilman, I, 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 I am sure that he means good. I just question the fact of how much Adam McFadden can do. Um, again, I want to make it clear. I, I, I feel he means good. I believe he really does. In the letter, it was interesting because it's the first time that I've seen him be so adamant and clear um, about denouncing the, you know, the, the, the fact that the Rochester Police Department is out of control. Um, and, and in large part, I do credit that to the, to the, to the fact of the attention that this has gotten. A Rochester City Councilman who said the city had, quote, lost control of its police force will announce Monday who will sit on a 15-member panel that will overhaul citizen oversight of the Rochester Police Department. McFadden said he wanted to revamp the commission in a critical three-page letter he sent to the mayor, the police chief, and the city council president last month. What I feel is um, everyone included, I believe everyone has a, a tendency to become complacent, you know what I mean? And I think that's happened possibly even with, with Adam, not even in a, in a bad way, but something, the reason I say this because something interesting in his, in his memo is that he basically said that for the past, I believe eight or so years, mm -hmm. he's been receiving complaints since he's basically been city councilman. And it's funny because I had like deja vu reading that because one of the meetings that he, I believe he either mentions and I've read so much. I mean, I just got back from, from Florida, so it's like I've read so much about this case, even when I was, was in Miami. Um, wh one of the things I believe he alludes to, if not pretty clearly points out in his letter, uh, um, is the fact that, that, um, that he's held meetings and, and, and whatnot on these issues. And I actually was like, wow, I, was, I actually remember six, seven, eight years ago being at one of the meetings at City Hall. So, so he's very truthful in his letter as far as what's going on. He calls it, I applaud Adam McFadden. Um, and I'll be honest at the same time, not, not to make a but here, like, oh, he's great, but. But honestly, it's the first time that I've seen him be so vocal because he did do meetings, but I think this was long overdue um, and, and I applaud him for it, I really do. And, um, and he's right. I mean, it really, we really have lost control. And I believe I've told everybody, even when I was in Florida, I did um, an interview with Carlos Miller, who a lot of people may recognize from photography. It's not a crime. He's a photographer in, in Miami who has been arrested twice for taking photographs of police officers. And, um, and basically, I, I did an interview about how if me or you or anyone watching now work for a company, and there, there will be consequences if we, if we violate a policy, if we, if we do something at work that, that is outside the guidelines and the policies of work. And I believe it's not even so much about the police officers on the street, to be honest with you. It is, but it isn't. And the reason I say it is is because it comes from higher that. There's a hierarchy. There's the chief. But guess what? Even the chief is a puppet on strings. Um, there's the mayor. And even the mayor, you got to wonder what influence there may be from outside forces, especially now that Duffy is lieutenant governor. In other words, I don't want to make a JFK conspiracy theory here, but there's so many things that, that even me, myself, who's, who I like to believe that I'm pretty well-versed on, on a lot of these issues, um, I hope I am, I've been, do I've been doing it for a while, there's things that are even beyond me, beyond you, beyond the average uh, citizen here in Rochester that we really don't know. And I don't know, I don't know what Mayor Ridge's uh, true intents are. Um, I was even shocked at the fact of the letter, which everyone kind of joined in on and, and signed off on. Um, that to me right there, I've never seen something like that. So even that kind of makes you wonder, like, wait a minute, is this too good to be true? So we truly don't know what's going on. Well, I don't think we'll ever be made privy to what's going on. Um, I applaud Adam McFadden. I mean, I, I hope and I do believe that his interests and his feelings are genuine.